Hello my friends, Amy Esther here, and in today's video, I want to share with you my tips and tricks for surviving the first year, or particularly the newborn stage, with a baby when you live chronically ill. If you have extra challenges, extra pain and fatigue, and things going on that make it even harder to make it through those sleepless nights, and that just really hard first year of having a baby, we're gonna talk about all that today. I am a professional at living with babies and chronic illness, so let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if you're brand new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I make videos every single week to help you live life while living chronically ill. And we learn how to do all the things. Today we're talking about babies. I get lots of questions about how I'm able to survive with babies and in particular the newborn stage, the sleepless nights, and it can be really hard for a lot of reasons. There's the sleep, the other physical stress that it puts on your body, lifting the baby and carrying car seats and just doing all of that stuff as well as the emotional stress. And when you're more emotionally stressed, it also can increase your pain and your fatigue and your symptoms. So for me in particular, I have POTS, Hashimoto's disease, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, endometriosis, PCOS, SIBO, uh, what am I forgetting? Uh, probably more. I have a lot of chronic illnesses. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things going on. Um, so of course, if you're particular situation is different, then maybe you'll have to adapt some of these tips to work for you. These are just my tips from my personal experience. I currently have a two and a half year old and a nine month old baby. So I have a baby right now and he doesn't always sleep through the night yet. However, I'm definitely past the hardest part, but I have done it twice. I have done those hard sleepless nights and nursing and all the things while living chronically ill. So the three main things I want to talk about today are sleep, the rest of your physical health and your emotional health. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to start with is sleep because I think that's what most of us think initially when we think about babies is we think of the lack of sleep. We just have that classic image of the, the sleep deprived mom. That's what we think of when we think of babies. And it's, it's, it's true. That's how it is. Okay. It's hard. You don't get sleep. <laughs> and especially at the beginning, it's really, really difficult. Now I had two babies. They're both very different. The first one cried every time I put her down. She wanted to nurse all the time. Uh, she wanted to be rocked to sleep. Even in the hospital, could not set her down without her screaming, and I didn't know what to do. I would just pray that she would stay asleep. And then I had my second child who was the complete opposite. He would cry when I picked him up, and then I'd set him down, and he was so happy to just be on his own, which was just a beautiful thing, okay? Not that I didn't love the snuggles because I love those baby snuggles and I'm not gonna lie, I did miss those a little bit with my son, but he just loved to sleep on his own and that just made a world of difference. So the first thing is every baby's different. Some of them are much harder to sleep. Some of them have colic or acid reflux or just other things that make it really, really hard for them to sleep and other ones sleep really well. So my son, even though he would fall asleep easily, he still did wake up a few times at night for quite a while. In fact, he still occasionally wakes up early in the morning, maybe around like four or five, uh, but he's super easy to get back to sleep. When my daughter would sleep longer stretches, like from the beginning, she just would sleep like eight hours, but she was so hard to get to sleep. <laughs> so they're just all so different. Um, but the one advice I have for you is sleep. I'm not a baby sleep expert. So I would recommend going to a baby sleep expert. I took a class um, right before I had my son. So my second child, um, I took a class by taking care of babies. She's on Instagram and she has a website and a blog. Her class helped so much. And although I do think my son just naturally was better at sleeping on his own, he enjoyed just being on his own and sleeping when my daughter like loved being held, I still think the tips that she shares in that class 
would have created a much better environment for my daughter and she would have slept a lot better, I think. Um, I'm glad I went through that experience now because I learned a lot, but yeah, it was a little rough <laughs> those first few months with her. Uh, but I would highly recommend taking her classes. It isn't sponsored by her at all, um, but her class I think was around $100 and it was super helpful. It's a newborn class and it's not about crying. There's no crying in this class. It's just teaching your baby to fall asleep on their own. I guess as you should say, helping your baby learn how to fall asleep on their own rather than uh, nursing, rocking, all of that. She shows you tips on how to get them calm and how to get them to stop crying. And it really, it was amazing how it worked. I followed her tips and he would just stop crying immediately. And I wish that I had done that with my daughter, <laughs> but uh, that would be my biggest advice is go there, um, take her class or get advice from another sleep expert. Uh, the one advice that I will give you that I learned from both of my babies is not to let them get over tired because anytime they got overtired, it was actually harder for them to sleep. And it seems like, oh, if we just push their nap back a little bit, or if we just skip the nap altogether, they'll sleep better at night. They're sleeping too much in the day, they'll sleep better at night. That was the opposite. When I let my baby sleep <laughs> and during the day, they actually slept longer and better at night. So that would be my one tip. And then also take that class. This tip I'm just probably gonna say 12 times in this video, but that is to ask for help, especially with sleep. It can be so hard when you're the mom and you're nursing and you have to get up and it has to be you because you're nursing. And if you're struggling, I'd recommend having your spouse or fam another family member or friend, whoever you have that is willing to help you at night to give baby a bottle, whether it's pumped breast milk, if you are breastfeeding, um, or if you're using formula, of course use formula, but if you are breastfeeding, I would recommend giving your baby a bottle at least once a day of, and you can just pump if you wanted to give them breast milk. What we would do is I would pump a bottle and then I would go to bed and my husband would stay up till 11 or 12 or so and give him a bottle before bed. So he basically did the first feed of the night um, and then he was able to sleep longer through the night. I think it's called like a dream feed when you kind of wake them up give them a bottle and then put them back down. But I would just pump before bed and then he'd have a bottle, but I could sleep during that whole time and just skip that feed. And everyone said to nap when they napped. I have never found that to be useful, especially if you have other kids because you can't just go take a nap whenever you want. <laughs> so I would recommend, at least in my case, it just seemed to be better and more useful for me to focus on getting as much nighttime sleep as possible and not try to nap the next day. I personally feel worse when I nap. I almost feel better getting like a six hour straight window than I do getting eight hours that's all scattered throughout the day. That's just me, but I find that the whole nap when they're napping just isn't very realistic and you don't know how long they're gonna nap, especially when they're newborn. Sometimes they nap for three hours, sometimes it's 20 minutes and you just don't know. So I find that just focus on nighttime sleep and then naps will, as they get older, those will start to normalize and get easier as well. And of course, remember that it's all just a phase that as they get older, their naps condense more. They get to where they're only taking two naps a day. And eventually when they're like a year to 18 months old, they'll go to just one nap a day. And so at the beginning, it does feel like they're just kind of napping all day. Um, and that's totally normal. They take like five naps a day, but it does slowly get more and more regular, more and more on a schedule. And so really just focusing on nights and letting naps go for the first six months or so makes it easier because when your expectations are too high, like, oh, well, babies should be napping. They should get this much sleep. Then it's frustrating when they're not actually doing that because they uh, just came into this world. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> um, so it does get better over time. So now I want to talk about the other physical stressors besides sleep that come with having a baby. And the first thing I want to tell you is to take it easy. I know it seems like those around you on Instagram and here on YouTube and your friends seem to get up and going so fast and they'll take their newborn to church and they'll uh, take their newborn to the zoo and they're just like out doing stuff with their new baby and you're like, uh, I barely have enough energy to change their diaper. Just take it easy. Babies really don't like 
do that much. Now, I, they're super fun and they're super cute, but until they're like eight months old, they don't even crawl. So that you can lay there next to them. You can read them books laying there on the floor with them. You can put them in the little swing. You don't have to be going out and doing all these crazy things. Take this season of life to rest. And yes, I know you're not getting a lot of sleep and you might not be able to nap while they're napping, but rest, just lay around. Don't worry about doing all the extra things. And of course, ask for help if you need help. I'm just gonna keep saying that. Ask for help, ask for help, ask for help. So another hard part physically about having a baby is nursing. So if you are choosing to nurse, one thing that I would recommend is trying to keep good posture. I was really bad, especially with my first child, of leaning over. I would look at her while she was nursing and I was just always worried. Is she latching? Is she getting up? food and I was so stressed out about that that I would just lean down and I had all these these neck problems and pain and migraines that got worse and worse because I just kept leaning down looking at her and yes those first couple weeks they are still learning to eat their body has this natural instinct to suck and to eat and they will get it and I know it can be hard especially if you're dealing with extra things like tongue ties and other issues with nursing um so if you're dealing with that, I am not an expert on that. So I'd, I'd consult a lactation specialist or your doctor um, for help on that. But do your best to keep good posture. Maybe try to get them latched. You look down while they're latching or you have someone else help you if you're comfortable with that. Um, and then try to keep your posture upright. Something that I did to help me is watch TV or watch a movie while I was nursing. Um, first of all, it, you are nursing a lot, and so it does help the time go by a little bit, uh, but it would help me keep better posture. So I turn something on, and then it would remind me if I started to look down at my baby, it would remind me because I would hear this movie playing in the background, like, oh yeah, I'm watching this movie, and I would keep my attention there, which is funny because normally I would probably recommend keep your attention on the baby, not on watching a movie or on your phone, but while you're nursing, it helps to keep good posture to watch something uh, so that you have a distraction there. You do need to eat a lot of food. In fact, you need to eat more food when you're nursing than even when you're pregnant. I did not know that when I first had my baby. I just always heard pregnant women eat so much. I eat so much more when I'm nursing, especially those first few months because you're just nursing all day and all night. That's all they eat for the first four to six months. And so you're nursing a lot. And so you do need to eat and drink a lot more. So I have a condition called POTS in which I already need to drink a lot of extra water and have a lot of extra salt. And so I would drink even more. I'm just always thirsty. I'm just drinking like crazy. I always have a water bottle with me. So make sure you have uh, a water bottle with you pretty much at all times if you are nursing and make sure you're eating more calories. If you struggle with digestion issues like me, try to eat more like nuts and seeds and things that are high in calorie. But then also my recommendation is to not stress about diet. I feel like people get so stressed about diets when they're nursing um, or I hear people say like, oh, your baby has colic or they have gas or they have whatever, it's because you're, you're eating milk. It's because you have dairy in your diet or gluten or they say all these things that are causing the baby distress. And yes, maybe that's possible. So I'm not going to say don't try to cut those things out of your diet if your pediatrician rec recommends it or you feel good about it. But try not to stress about it because with my daughter, she had, she cried a lot. <laughs> and I was told that she was probably having gas. And so I just kept telling it myself it was me. It was what I was eating. And so I'd cut out dairy and then that wouldn't work. And I cut out peanut butter and I just, I tried all these different things and nothing ever seemed to work except time. And I really wish that I had been a little more relaxed about it and not stress so much and not blamed myself if she was having these issues. Yes, try the things if you want to try cutting things out of your diet, but if it doesn't work, it might not be your diet at all. It might have nothing to do with you. It's just your baby's body learning how to process the food. It might be that they don't have gas and they're really just overtired, which also could have been the case with my daughter. I don't know, uh, but just over stressing about that, whether it is food or maybe it's sleep <laughs> or stressing about their sleep, because I also did that. 
just try to not overstress because then that causes so many other issues. And we'll talk about that when we get to the emotional section of, of this video. But anyway, don't stress about food. I'd also recommend staying home a lot <laughs> during those first few months. I personally am a homebody. I like to be home. I do, I do get a little stir crazy and occasionally I have to go out. However, I found that with babies, it's so much easier and better if I go out by myself. Um, and I take that time for me, first of all, like my husband's off work, I take an hour or two and I go out to shopping or something just to get out of the house and be on my own. But then also, it's so hard to take a baby somewhere. One, because of nursing, and then also because of carrying the baby around and all the extra stuff. So I would highly recommend staying home as much as possible. Also sickness. There's just so many reasons that I just like to stay home with my babies for those first few months. And when you have a new baby, people are willing to come to you, which is so nice. So I would highly recommend taking advantage of that, letting people come to you and keeping the germs and the extra energy away by just staying home a lot. Which brings me to carrying the baby, which is another big physical stressor. A lot of people would tell me like, you have to baby carry. You have to get these baby wraps. It's so good for you and the baby. And I did that with my daughter. It was exhausting, especially once they got a little bit bigger. It's just so heavy to carry them around with you all the time. And I would wrap my daughter up and I would try to like clean the house or do dishes or something. No, that was just a terrible idea because then I got a third of the amount of work done that I would have gotten in the same amount of time and it took three times as much energy. So it was just not worth it for me. So if you live chronically ill and you have a lot of fatigue and pain, I do not recommend baby wearing. I would recommend using a stroller. If you just want to get out of the house with the baby, take a stroller. I like the ones that you can take the baby car seat and put it like it locks into the stroller, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, I like those ones for when they're really tiny, but it just helps a lot to not carry them around. But if you want to hold your baby and snuggle your baby, I'd recommend doing it laying down or sitting down. Um, I like having a rocking chair. I think that helps a lot, especially with middle of the night nursings and stuff, is to have a rocking chair that has a foot rest and so you can just kind of relax and you can snuggle the baby and you can hold the baby just like you would if you were baby wearing, but you're resting. And just resting, is that my whole tip for this whole video is rest as much as possible. Don't try to do it all. And if you do need to get stuff done, like cleaning and all that fun stuff, then put the baby down. I just never put my daughter down. And yes, she was my first baby and I would say I don't really regret it because I I had a lot of baby snuggles. But uh, especially with my second, I just could not afford to not put him down sometimes because I did have to take care of my other child. I had to make her food even though I made very quick easy meals and we used paper plates. I still had to do some stuff and baby wearing, like I said, was too much energy. So I would put him down. I'd put him down in a swing or a rocker. And what I like to do is have a place for baby to go in every room. So in our living room, I had the baby swing. In the kitchen, I had uh, the little bouncer. And then in their room, they have their crib. I also had like a portable crib. Ooh, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, can't remember what it's called, but a little portable crib if um, I wanted to be in a different place, but really I just, the main areas of our house, I had a place for baby to go and lay down so that I didn't have to constantly hold him and he could be there with us and we could interact with him, but I had a lot less energy to sit and hold him the whole time. The biggest advice I have for you when it comes to your physical health is decrease all the unnecessary things. Get rid of anything that's not absolutely necessary. So yes, you probably want to shower still. Yes, you probably want to eat, <laughs> but how can you limit all of that energy as much as possible? With laundry, I did not worry about my babies staining clothes. 
I just didn't. I washed them, I put them in the washer. I might spray them with a little stain remover, but I did not take the time to sit and soak and scrub and do all that because you know what? As soon as I wash it and I put it back on my baby, another stain gets on there. So with my babies, I just let there be stains on their clothes and I don't worry about it. I might have one nice outfit for if we do pictures or if someone's coming over or something that I have nice that I just save for special occasions or whatever. But most of their clothes, 99% of their clothes, I let them get stains all over them. So if you look through my baby's closets and their old clothes, there are stains all over them. And I had friends who always had perfectly nice clothes and they would tell me, oh, I use this stain remover and I, I do this and I soak it in the bathtub and then I scrub it. No, I just skipped all of that. Too much work, too much energy. I am okay with stains, not a problem for me. Other things that I decreased, like I mentioned, was paper plates. I don't do dishes when I, I anytime I have a flare up, I don't do dishes. But particularly during those first few months with a baby, I do not do dishes, get tons of paper plates, silverware, all those things. We go out to eat a lot. Um, we spend extra money on DoorDash or uh, foods that are quick and easy. We might do frozen meals. I usually am too lazy to make my own. That's just a fun fact about me. I'm very lazy, but I usually don't want to make my own. And so I'll buy like store-bought frozen meals or just things that are really quick and easy. And maybe your kids watch more movies during that time or TV. I personally don't do a lot of TV for my kids. Not, I'm not anti-TV, but we don't, it's not like a regular thing that we just have a show every day or anything like that. But when I first had my new baby, my other child would watch more TV because I needed to rest more and I needed to nurse more and do those things. And so maybe the TV's on a little bit more. Maybe they go to grandma's a little more than they used to. Or maybe you just ask people to come help you. Have I mentioned that yet? Ask for help. <laughs> Let your house be a mess. If someone comes over, they most likely will not judge you for having a dirty house when you have a newborn, especially if they have had a newborn before. They will totally know how it is. But if they do judge you, that is their problem. That is not yours. Let them judge you. Just don't worry about it. Don't worry about having a clean house. Don't worry about having baby stains. Don't worry about doing dishes. Leave that all for another day. You can be the super mom on another day today. This season of life is not that time. And the last thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to your physical health is postpartum uh, your yourself, healing all of the, you know, the stuff. So, I have never had a C-section, so I do not have any recommendations or advice on a C-section, but for my births, my biggest recommendation that I learned with my first child, I did very wrong, is to be less active helps you heal faster. So with my daughter, I was like, I'm gonna go on the walks, and I'm going, like, I'm feeling pretty good, I can totally get up and clean, and I would just try to be more active, because I, I like being active, I like doing things, I don't like to not have a clean house. My advice from before, I really had to work hard on with my babies because I like to do stuff, but it makes you heal longer. It just took me so long to heal with my daughter. I think it was like eight to 10 weeks when I felt like I healed, but I still had pain probably up till around six months with my first child and I think part of it was because she was my first child but I think a big part of it was that I was just really active like two okay when I say really active I live chronically ill so probably normal people would be like you're doing nothing but for me as someone who lives with lots of fatigue and lots of pain I felt like I was doing a lot um with my son I rested so much more I gave myself a lot more time to leave the house a mess to do all the, the simple things to avoid anything that was too much energy. And I healed significantly faster. I healed in probably four or five weeks and I didn't have any pain after probably two months, like no pain at all. So 
it was a big difference and I think it had to do yes of course with it was my second child but also I think a ton of it had to do with just taking taking more time to rest okay third section this is becoming a much longer video than planned but that's how all of them are because I like to talk so emotional health and probably the most important first advice is watch out for signs of postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, any other mental disorders. But the baby blues is also common, which I think is a lot to do with the lack of sleep mixed with the hormones again. Uh, but that usually, at least according to my doctor, said he, he said it only lasts about two weeks. And if it's lasting longer than that, then definitely look into depression and maybe some more severe things going on there. But please get help with whatever it is. Uh, for me, I found that the first few weeks, I just cried a lot. <laughs> and I think that was the baby blues. I didn't feel like it lasted long enough to be considered depression. But I cried, like, especially at night. It was like anytime I was feeling tired and the baby woke me up, I would just like burst into tears. Um, so my next advice is that it's normal. It's normal to have emotional stress with having a new baby. It's normal to not have an instant connection with your baby. It's normal to just be really stressed out and sad and have a hard time finding the joys in it. That's all normal. And I think we see this idealized picture of having a baby where you're just perfectly happy all the time and everything's wonderful and you have that sweet baby in your arms and that perfect picture moment and it's just a moment that is not the reality i'm not sure i've ever met anyone whose entire newborn stage is the picture perfect moment my second baby was the easiest baby ever like so easy and yet still i would have moments of bursting into tears i would still have moments of frustration and um and i it was really hard. It really is so hard. And so all of that is normal. Uh, it takes time for you to get used to being a mom or if it's your second or third or fourth or fifth child, it's getting used to it being a new baby in the house. It takes some getting used to and all of that is totally normal. But if you are having severe symptoms, I would definitely recommend getting professional help I did see a, a therapist when, after I had my la, my son, I was dealing with some postpartum anxiety and uh, that helped a lot. It's just talking to him every week and being able to get it out. So I highly recommend talk therapy, whether it's therapy or I also went to a life coach. So I had a life coach and I have my therapist. I've talked about this before in my channel, but I like to use both. They both work well for me in different ways. So uh, therapy, life coaching, just talking to a friend or a family member regularly, especially someone who has experienced having a newborn is very, very helpful. Other things to help your emotional health is to do things that calm you down. So that could be journaling, yoga, meditation, yoga and journaling are things that really help me. Um, doing hobbies that you enjoy that don't take a lot of energy. So maybe that's writing, uh, maybe you have a blog, uh, maybe you like to knit or crochet or something like that. Maybe you write poems, maybe you play the piano or sing. Find things that you enjoy that are hobbies to you but that don't take a lot of energy. It's like I said, you might not want to be going out on hikes. You might not want to uh, be going to the gym or doing things that take a lot of energy from you, but just do self-care things, hobbies that, that make you happy. Get yourself a treat, whatever your favorite treat is, get that, eat it a lot while you are in those first few months. You deserve it, my friend. I know everyone when they're pregnant thinks, oh, like I can eat everything I want. I don't feel guilty. I'm like, no, my friend. You can eat whatever you want anytime and you don't have to feel guilty. So especially those first few months, get yourself a treat, take any time you need for you. All right, my friends, that is all the tips I have for you today. This was a very long video. I did not realize it would be as long as it was, but here we are. Uh, so I just wanna leave you with the last little bit of advice, which is 
Of course, ask for help. Anytime you are struggling with anything that's related to babies or just life in general, ask for help, my friends. Also remember that it is a short time period. It really is. It might feel long. The days and the weeks <laughs> might feel long, but I promise it really is a short moment and it's so worth it to have sweet children and babies with you. They're just, they're so worth it. And remember to see the blessings because it can be really hard when you are on this lack of sleep and in this kind of crazy emotional state to see the blessings of it. But there are a million blessings of having babies and holding them in your arms. There's just moments that you will cherish and you'll think about forever and ever. So anyway, I should probably end this video, but you guys are amazing. And those of you who are wanting to be a mom and just feel like you can't do it, I am proof that it is possible. You know how many people told me that I shouldn't be a mom? A lot of people. And here I am, mom of two children that are beautiful and amazing and it's worth every hard moment. I would do it again a million times for them. I love them so much. You're amazing. See you in my next video. Thank you.